Welcome to the Lead Your Wife podcast, where if you're like, I don't even know what that means, well, you're in the right place, brother, because I didn't either. And it wasn't until I started figuring it out that I was able to turn everything around inside my marriage. And so today's episode is that you are the chief romance officer inside your marriage. Now, what does that mean? What it means is that it is up to you as to whether or not there is a romantic feeling inside your marriage, whether there are romantic experiences inside your marriage, whether your marriage has as a component romance, regular romance, or whether it does not. Now, you might be thinking, I don't even care because I don't really even know what it means and I don't have any desire for romance and why is this falling on me? Well, what I'm going to tell you is that it's a component of something that your wife deeply desires in her most primal parts of her brain. She deeply craves this. She is deeply desperate for these romantic moments, these romantic experiences. And if you deprive her of one of her deepest needs, that is not going to end well for your marriage. It is not going to end well for what you want out of the marriage. And I'm talking especially when it comes to behind closed doors. So if we take a look at kind of the female psyche, if we take a look at at least the traditional romantic movies, the chick flicks, things do seem to be changing with millennial women and their their earlier access to overtly sexual stuff. But my audience tends to be either the Gen Xers or the baby boomers. And when you look at the Gen X and the baby boom women and you look at what kind of romance do they want, most of the time, look at the Hallmark movies. Look at these, these, these love stories, these love actually type movies, these affair to remember type movies. Like if you look at these movies, what they are is they're all the emotion without the sex. If you look at the Hallmark movies, it's like every one of these couples, you know, in real life, they're having sex, but they never actually show them having sex. Now, if you look at pornography, and this is interesting. Pornography is the difference. It's all the sex without the emotion. So if you look at the way that men are wired, men want to skip the emotion and just get straight to the sex. And women want to live in the emotion. And, and the sex will come. But by far and away, they, the women are satisfied with these chick flicks and these love stories, these romantic movies, even if no sex occurs. And that should tell us something as men. What does romance mean? Well, it does not mean sex. It does not mean sex. Does it lead to sex? Absolutely. But it is, it's the anticipation of sex. So if you think about what does it mean when my wife says that she wants me to be more romantic, really what she's telling you is that she wants you to to set the stage, to set the thermostat, to set the mood, to create an environment where sex is likely to occur. And not just because as a man, you're ready at the drop of a hat and you expect her to be, but because you have warmed her up to that by showing up in the emotional space in such a way that it fosters an environment and enables and acts like a catalyst towards sexual activity. It's the buildup. It's the anticipation. It's the, it's the thinking about it. You know, that feeling that you get when you're waiting in line. And, and if you're a father and you've ever taken your children to Disney world and you're waiting to, to get the picture taken with the, with the character and you're in line there and man, you've been in line for a long time. And then all of a sudden, you're next. The same thing at the bank, same thing at the grocery store, same thing in the drive through Like when you're next, there's a feeling that is actually better than it's actually your turn. This anticipation that you're finally going to get what you're waiting for. And this is something that when, when it comes to the sexual part of the relationship, something that women live for. 
like the the thought of the act the anticipation of the act the the fantasy about the act is as important if not sometimes more so to a woman than the act that's why they can watch the hallmark movies and they never get to see these two get naked in between the sheets and they're perfectly fine because in their mind they have completed the sentence in their mind they saw them do what they what they were necessarily going to do and so for your wife to want to participate into in a sexual act with you it is upon you to create that stage how do you do it you do it with romance so what is romance well man that can be an hour-long conversation because it could be how you said good morning to her it could be how you noticed the trash needed to be taken out and you took it out it could be that when you went downstairs for lunch and you noticed after having told her that you're only going to have an hour, you're only going to have an hour for lunch and you come downstairs three minutes early thinking, okay, we've got an hour and three minutes. We got to run out, get something, get back. Cause I got to be back on a zoom call or whatever. And you see her sitting there with a towel on her head in her robe, rather than going off on her and saying, I thought we discussed the fact I only had an hour for lunch. Apparently you did not hear me just taking a moment and saying, are you okay? Are you feeling okay? What's going on? And finding out that she's actually not feeling okay. And then taking care of her in that moment. But these are not the things that most people associate with traditional romance. But what I'm telling you, man, is that from a man's perspective, you should be romancing your wife every day and you should be leading in this space. So it could be noticing she's not feeling well. It could also be a grand gesture. It could be renting the limousine. It could be taking her to the exclusive restaurant. It could be the weekend getaway that you're planning. It could be an adventure or an experience that you create or curate inside your own walls. Maybe you, you, you find somebody to have the kids overnight and you turn your phone off and you're completely present with her and you cook her dinner and you clean up the dishes while you tell her to sit down and relax because it's her turn to be waited upon. It could be a foot rub. It could be a glance. It could be a word. It could be a card. It could be flowers. It could be, it could be candy. It could be if she doesn't want to eat candy and, and maybe she's trying to eat paleo that you make her, you, you meal prep or paleo stuff for her for lunches. It's like seeing her, noticing her and doing something special to court her. Now it's, it's crazy how we think about this, you, you know, it, when, especially when people are the, especially the millennials, the people who accuse this of cuck like or simp like behavior. It's like when you are courting a woman, what do you do, man? And there's a country song about it. Can I wash my truck to pick her up and watch TV? Like you go out of your way to make yourself presentable. You go out of your way to make your truck presentable. You go out of your way to rearrange your schedule to accommodate her. You go out of your way to deny yourself what you want to do. You, you, you take a shower and wash your truck and go over to her house. The first thing you want to do is have sex. It's not, it's not watch TV, but you, you deny your own needs. You delay your own needs and you put hers ahead of, of yours. And this is done symbolically in the romantic part of the relationship. It is done actually in the day-to-day -day part of the relationship. Maybe you want to go fishing some weekend. That's the weekend that she wanted to go quilt shopping. You forget you scheduled a fishing appointment with your buddies. If, you, if you're a smart guy, what you're going to do is you're going to cancel the fishing appointment and you're going to take the quilt appointment because she's got to come first. Well, not always are there opportunities to show her that she comes first. So if you create opportunities to show her that she comes first, then she gets her romantic tank full. And then here's the thing, brother. When you have done this and you have curated and created these experiences and opportunities that let her know that she is seen and heard and held and special and cherished and nourished and that she comes first. And then you accidentally create a conflict and you agree to go fishing with your buddies when she wanted you to go quilt shopping. Guess what, man? She's got that emotional gas in her tank. She doesn't need 
for you to prove to her that she comes first. She doesn't need for you to fix the fact that she hasn't been coming first because you have been the chief romance officer and because you have been giving her experiences that let her know that she is courted, that she is pursued, that you did not stop courting her just because you put a ring on her finger, that you're still trying to show her that you will go out of your way for her because she is special and she is appreciated and she is enough and she is valuable and she is seen and heard and held and loved and cherished. And you do this with these romantic gestures. But if you sit back and you expect her to lead in this space, then you're going to be sadly disappointed in your marriage. Because when you get this right and you want to make a withdrawal from her emotional bank account and you ask her for dedicated, concentrated time behind closed doors where she will take care of your needs, like she's got to have gas in the tank to do that. And everything that I've just been talking about is what puts that gas in the tank. So a wise man understands that he will lead the romantic experiences. He will lead the romantic dim dimension and domain inside the marriage and the relationship. That he will take it upon himself to initiate romantic moments and romantic experiences and make sure that they are, they're hitting the nail on the head. Do that, man. Do that. And when you do that, what you're going to find is that when it's time for your needs to get met, she's going to be all over them. All over a man, and that's no pun intended. But you've got to go first. You've got to lead. Men take the lead. Men create certainty. Men take a stand. Men initiate bold and courageous and, co and creative action. So go initiate some romance, man, and see how that changes your marriage. And this has been another chapter from the book of Bob. Now, here's the thing, man. You may be listening to this, and you may be thinking, my wife doesn't want any of that from me. And if that's the case... It's because your marriage is in a ditch. If your marriage is in a ditch, we help you get it out. And if you want to understand how to get help getting your marriage out of the ditch, what I've got for you is I want you to go to www.realmanrevolution.com, www.realmanrevolution.com, and I'll see you on the other side.